When you are a beginner in electronics, this is one of the most important circuits that you can make. It's the A stable multivibrator and I've made much more videos about this circuit on my YouTube channel, but anyway, I have quite a, a few new viewers on my YouTube channel, so that's also the reason why I make this video. Um, it's This is a classical A-stable multivibrator circuit. One transistor here, one transistor there. Uh, they drive each other via the capacitors, so from the amplifying element here first transistor, it, the signal goes to the um, second transistor, it amplifies and it sends its signal back and it's amplified again. Of course it's not so simple as I tell it here, but anyway. A small advice for all electronic beginners. Use the BC547 and the BC557, NPN, PMP, medium power transistors, the BD139 and the BD140, NPN, PMP, the 2N3055 power transistor, NPN, and for high frequency applications, the 2N2219. It's a very useful transistor for real high frequency circuits, but this is of course not a high frequency circuit. By the way, here are the pin connections. And um, it's important to tell that everything here is frequency dependent. When you change the voltage, the frequency will change. When you change the transistors, the frequency will differ. When you change these resistors here, they are, they are responsible for the frequency, the resistors to the base here, the frequency will change and of course, very important, when you change the value of these capacitors here, the frequency will also change. And that's important, not only the frequency will change, but also the waveform. And that's the reason why you see here these two drawings. This is only the output capacitor that has no effect, almost no effect, on the uh, waveform. Uh, anyway, when you connect here a resistor, it could be could have an effect, but that's not relevant in relation to this video. I want to demonstrate that. Here's my uh, oscilloscope at the moment connected to this circuit. That's the circuit that I showed in the drawing, in the schematic. And let's see or listen what this circuit does. This is the frequency that it gives out. And you can see here, it sounds quite pure, but it is not a real sine wave. It is a kind of square wave. A square wave differs in its sound from a sine wave. The sine wave is the most pure sound and square, uh, sorry, square waves, triangle waves and sawtooth waves like this sound a little bit sharp, but anyway, no problem. And here is the circuit again and I want to demonstrate now what happens when we change, change the base resistor 
of the first transistor. The sound is annoying, but anyway, I now switch between 12K and 1K. Now it's 1K. And now it is 12K. And you can immediately see that the frequency it has completely changed. So <laughs> there is a quite long time here. Short pulse, quite long time here. Short pulse, etc., etc. And um, that means that you can also try to get here a perfect uh, square wave. And that means that the time here has to be shorted, shortened, etc. And that are all experimental things that you can do with this circuit. And that's the reason why I, I call it a beginner circuit and um, an experimental circuit. So uh, let's see what happens when we change in that circuit uh, the capacitor that goes from the um, collector here to the base here. Of course that will have an effect on the frequency. So I use here now a quite high um, bipolar uh, capacitor 213 nanofarad and here 100 nanofarad. Uh, that means that there, there must be a time difference given by the values of these two capacitors and also by the this resistor and that resistor, but anyway I only want to demonstrate here that time difference and thus frequency difference. Let's listen. I now connect that 0 0.39 microfarad capacitor. And you can surely hear the difference and on the scope surely that difference is, difference is visible. You can see very short and sharp pulses. And when you want to give uh, this a shorter time do changes in the circuit. In the value of the base resistors. That's the reason, that's the way to change the time in between, or of course, when you uh, make this capacitor and that capacitor exactly the same value, uh, the time will also differ anyway. Want to show now how the voltage here uh, has an effect on the frequency. Uh, it's now 12 volt. This is a decoupling unit. By the way, doesn't matter much. But anyway, we are now on 9 volts. And I want to lift up the voltage. Thirty two volts. The waveform changes, the frequency changes, etc. Go back now. To the lowest value where it works. And that's 2.0 volts. And I remove now that big capacitor. And it works on 3.4 volts. And this is a very 
interesting effect that you always hear. And that is the effect of the lower, lower voltages. On low voltages, say between 1 volt and 2 volt, the frequency goes up suddenly. Anyway, could be a useful effect. So this circuit is for all these reasons a very good beginner circuit to get insight in electronics and especially oscillators, effects of capacitors here and here, effects of uh, resistors and these capacitors form with the resistors um, a time dependent circuit and thus a frequency dependent circuit. They together. And there are of course on the World Wide Web and the Internet many other sources for everyone that wants to calculate values, um, calculate frequencies, etc. etc. But my knowledge is more or less always experimental and that's also the aim of my YouTube video, YouTube videos. I want to show practical circuits. So that's important. And furthermore, of course, when you use here a power uh, transistor and here a coil and remove that uh, resistor here, uh, it's possible that a very powerful current starts to flow on a certain frequency between the collector and the emitter and that also means that with such a simple uh, a stable multi vibrator circuit you can make a power circuit uh, primary here in this lead say of the BD139 or the Darlington BD139 combined with a 2 and 3 of R5 Powerful current will start to flow on a certain frequency and on the secondary you can take a high voltage out. I've done that in the past with success for voltages between 150 volts and even much higher. So it's a beginner circuit but very interesting. You can learn a lot of doing experiments with this circuit and of course use it in practice. Be it a sound generator, uh, a driver for a higher voltage etc. So So interesting. All these phenomena are very interesting, etc.